So now, as you notice, the Bible did not describe the color of Jacob. Why? Because Jacob looked exactly like the other people in the earth. There was no need for description. But because there was a new race coming into the earth, diverse or different, and a different mannerism from the people before it, the Bible had to identify the different child. Okay? The first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. All right? Don't forget, the Bible says that Esau was to be the servant after his brother came out. And it says, and Jacob's hand took hold of Esau's heel. So what do, what do that represent? Okay? Is that an analogy? Let's see. Go to the Apocrypha and get second address out of the Apocrypha. You have it in here? Mm -hmm. Okay. You have a Bible with the Apocrypha in it right here. Read 2nd Ezra 6, 8, and 9 to give the precept on what that means that Jacob took hold of Esau's heel. Now you have to understand how this works. The head or the crown is the beginning. The heel is the end. The head is the beginning that comes out. The heel is the end. 2nd Ezra 6, and, 6, 8, and 9. Read that. Second Ezra 6 and 8. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, and Jacob and Esau were born of him. Go ahead. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. You know, his foot is the end. Why? Read. Verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world. For Esau is the end of the world. So that's shown according to Scripture, who would be ruling at the end of the world. We're at the end of the world. And we know that after this rulership, Christ will bring Jacob's rulership or Israel's rulership in the earth. It's going to read it. Read on. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. To, to show you that it will be a change of hands or change of dominion without separation. The hand was connected to the heel. So as soon as Esau's power or kingdom fall, Jacob's is next without separation. So when Christ come back, he's bringing forth Jacob's kingdom. That show you that Esau is the end of the world identifying who are the children of Esau according to the Bible. Go back to Genesis 25. Because just like we mentioned, we mentioned earlier how the serpent need a nation or government or people to execute his rule in the physical. Alright? Now, now, we're going to show you how this happened here. Go back to Genesis 25 and finish reading. Because it's going to show you some attributes of Jacob and Esau. Okay? Read. Verse 27. And the boys grew. Genesis 25 and 27. The boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter. He was a what? Was a cunning hunter. Esau was a cunning hunter. Who was the first hunter? Nimrod. A cunning hunter. See, the apple don't fall too far from the tree. So, Esau's children will be just like his father. Jacob's children would be just like his father. Esau was a cunning hunter out in the field killing animals and doing all type of gaming in the field. Okay? Read. A man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Ja Jacob was a what? Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. So Jacob didn't like the outside, the, the, the killing deer and sporting outside. Jacob stayed home. He dealt with things, you know, the, the domestic things around the house or around the neighborhood. He didn't go out into the field. Okay? Read. Verse 28. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. See, Isaac loved Esau because Esau went to get the food. Okay? But Rebekah loved who? Jacob. 
You know why? Because of that vision or that prophecy the Most High gave her. To tell her that the elder shall serve the younger. So she knew the blessed child. She cleaved to the blessed child. The child that the Most High chose before they were born. Okay? Read on. Verse 29. And Jacob sought pottage. And Esau came from the field. So Jacob was making some pottage. You know, he was a man that stayed home in the tent. So he used to make the food. He stayed around moms. So he learned how to cook. So he was sodding some pottage. And what happened with Esau? And Esau came from the field. And he was faint. He was faint. Like he was ready to die. He needed some nourishment. Read. Verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. He there said, Feed me with that same red pottage. So there was blood in the water. The food or the meat was not done. Feed me with that same red pottage. Read. For I am faint. Go ahead. Therefore was his name called Edom. Edom, which means red or blood. Red. So because he liked his food rare, his name was changed to Edom. Read. Verse 31. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. So Jacob said, Okay, I'll feed you. Let me get that birthright. Read. Verse 32. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? He said, Listen, I'm going to die anyway. What good is this birthright? So he didn't even have respect of the gift of the birthright that the Most High gave him. Okay? Now, we know that before they were born, it was already prophesied the elder shall serve the younger. But this is that prophecy playing out in the physical. Okay? Cause and effect. Things have to happen to allow the prophecy to come to pass. So the Most High had him out, out in the field dealing with something to the point where he thought he was going to die. He was so faint. He needed nourishment. And that's when the, the opportunity presented itself for Jacob to get the birthright. The same birthright the Most High told Rebecca that second child would receive. Okay? Read. Verse 33. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up, and he went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Esau despised his own birthright. You see that? So now, the prophecies are being fulfilled. Jacob, which is the future father of the Israelites, now have the birthright.